I have good news. Spring is here. You've probably noticed all the birds out singing, the plants flowering, the insects emerging from their cocoons. And what this means to a biologist is that the wildlife all around us has entered a sexually active state. The study of phenology is all about understanding how plants and animals time this very important transition every spring. I study the breeding phenology of songbirds, which basically looks at the timing of when birds decide to do it. I'm looking at how the environment influences the timing of mating and egg laying in birds, and also the consequences of variation in the timing of egg laying on the offspring. Birds don't lay their eggs until April, but the timing of this may be determined by events beginning in January, and the effects will last until the end of the breeding season in late June, and ultimately influence the lifetime reproductive success of the individual. So what's going on in January? It's not so much about the birds at this stage, but actually their prey. The bird I study is the European starling, and they primarily feed on these juicy soil larvae called tapulids. The developmental life cycle for the tapulid is hardwired by the wintertime soil moisture and temperature levels, so I'm looking at how those wintering conditions for the tapulid may influence the timing of the bird's breeding in the spring. The next key period on the calendar of songbird reproduction is March, and you can think of this as like the few weeks before prom in high school where everyone's looking for a date, and there's all this commotion and build up to the main event. Male birds sing during this time to declare a territory and attract a female, so I'm looking at how the amount of song influences the timing of female egg laying. I'll also be experimentally manipulating bird song by recording the male singing and then broadcasting it on speakers to kind of trick females into thinking that they have these really sexy males serenading them all day long. And we'll see how that affects the timing of when she decides to lay her eggs. So why does the timing of egg laying matter? Well, these are some chicks that hatched in May of last year and the size and mass of the chicks is strongly related to how early the chicks hatch. Chicks from early eggs are larger and fatter than the scrawny late chicks. So I'm looking at the flight ability and the physiology underlying aerobic capacity in these early versus late chicks to try and understand how that initial timing of egg laying may determine offspring quality. Now these chicks will grow up, they'll leave the nest, and just when you think it's all over, about a third of the birds on our site start this process all over again. They lay a whole new clutch of eggs and potentially double their reproductive output for the year. So I'm looking at a long-term data set on our birds to try and understand exactly who's breeding twice and how this relates to their initial timing of egg laying back in April. So as the spring weather gets you outside this year, I hope you'll stop and notice all the birds mating around you and appreciate the complexity of this behavior. In order to breed successfully, birds have to keep track of their food resources, their social relationships with one another, but when they get their timing right, they're able to raise numerous high-quality offspring that populate the world of birds around us.